Welcome back to another episode of It's All About the Angler. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little frog tips and tricks video 101. I know it's been a day or two, probably two or three actually, since I've made a video. I have been going fishing, yes, it's just I've been going for an hour here and there. And I haven't been bringing the camera along with me because I didn't know if I'd be able to make enough video content out of it. But today we're going to be just doing a tips and tricks video inside, so here we go. Alright, the first thing I'm going to go over with you guys is the brand of frogs that I use. Uh, there are a couple of reasons that I use the brand I do. I've had bad luck with others, some just don't hold up as long. And these are just the ones I personally have the best luck with. And it happens to be the Booyah brand frogs. And they have a couple different kinds. I, the two main that I buy are just the popping frog like that, that has the mouth to displace water and then just the normal frog imitator and color wise with frogs what you guys are going to want to do is I use three main colors uh, these are just a few of my frogs here that I just took out of my box but colors it, of course the top isn't going to really matter that much because the fish are going to only be seeing the belly of it but the ones that the bass are going to be seeing or the colors you're going to want are that I use the most at least are the ones with the white belly or just a pure white frog which this is probably my favorite frog and then there's ones that you want a dark almost black belly and either like a darker natural or a lighter natural color on the belly both of them work really good it just depends on the weather and for weather wise the, when you want to throw the white is when it's going to be sunny out, so you want to match the light. So if it's sunny, you want to have a light color. So the sun is light, light color. And if it's cloudy, it's dark, you want a dark belly. Don't ask me why it is, but believe me, it'll make a difference. They will eat any color at any time. I'm not saying that's when you have to have to throw that. I'm just saying that's when the most luck you're going to have is when matching light with light and dark with dark. Uh, they could hit a light colored frog on the cloudiest day about to rain and they could also hit this with the sun straight in the air, bluebird skies, you just never know. And the natural colored ones are just good for any time, you just gotta mess around with the colors and figure out what they're gonna want the best and it's easier when you have a buddy with you and you can have two different colored frogs on, see which one they're gonna hit better and then just change to whatever one that they're gonna munch on the most. Also I do some modifications to my frogs, uh, the first one that we're gonna go over are the legs. This is a frog that is fresh out of the box and it hasn't touched the water yet. But as you can see, the legs are longer than the body even. They stick out longer. And you can do a couple things with the legs. I don't personally don't like them that long because if you do leave them that long, I seem to get more short strikes with them. Like the fish, if you're moving it pretty fast and you kind of get a reaction strike out of them, they'll come and try to bite the legs on it and just suck it under that way. And if you cut it off shorter, then it's less likely, likely for that to happen. So there's a couple things I'll do with the legs if I don't like them long. I cut them either way before I use them. But sometimes if I want to just use it as a walking frog, then what I'll do is I'll cut one just about an inch up, about right there, and then the other one I'll cut two and a half inches up about right there. And what leaving one leg longer than the other one does, it helps you really walk the frog. And walking is when it's in the water, it's not just popping up in the air. Walking is when you just, it jets back and forth like that and it stays over top of the fish longer and that's when you're going to get the bites majority of the time. And if I just want one that I'm going to be working pretty fast and just skimming across pads and scum, then I'll just go about an uh, inch and a half, two inches up and cut them off about right there. And the longest I about keep them is about like that. That's the longest I have out of any of these, especially on these poppers, the ones that you can't walk because they're meant just to pop up water and make loud pops as you bring them through the water. I keep those pretty short, as you can see. I, even some of these are real short, about that same length. The next modification I'll do to my frogs are I keep this pair of pliers. They're pretty sturdy there. They're not going to bend out or anything, but a lot of these frogs that, I don't think Booyah has Gamagatsu, but I think the Spros have Gamagatsu hooks, and they're pretty sturdy, so you need a good pair of pliers to keep in your bag to bend these. But as you can see, which one has it? This one. If you can see, there's just a little bit of space between the 
frog plastic and the hook. And the, most of the time when I'm throwing them, I'm throwing them in thick stuff that has not only like the duckweed that sits on top, but it has thick grass that's on top and that'll catch on it and it'll bring it with the rest of the cast and that can ruin some of your fishing. So what I'll do is I'll take them and I'll bend them back so it's like this yellow one where it's flush with the plastic it can, you can do that it doesn't catch your finger it's just barely touching the plastic so as soon as that squishes down they're going to be exposed but when you're ripping it through that grass it's not the grass isn't going to catch on those hooks that's i do that to all of these frogs i don't know why i haven't done that one but yeah some of them it's not just the brand that can vary you can buy two of the same frogs and some of them will stick out in the air and some of them won't but you don't want to bury them too far down either because then it'll kind of catch in the plastic and it'll mess up your hook sets as well. Another thing I have also not gone over is these couple of frogs, I believe these ones aren't the booyahs. This one happens to be a spro. Uh, I'm not a huge spro fan because some of the bodies are just too hard for me and I just don't like the hookup ratio on them. But this one I believe is meant for more gliding. The body's kind of like a V so it cuts through the scum and it's good for when it, the mat is really thick and it can still leave a line through it so when the bass are looking up at it they can still see it and this is a lunker hunt this looks good and these are really good in open water I like them because the legs they'll do a realistic kick motion every time you twitch it this one they're not too good for walking but just the twitch twitch pause motion is really good with these northern also like them that's why one of the legs is bitten off and this is also really good if you see a lot of shad sucking or bluegill that are popping up on top of the water these are really good to throw um, it's just a top water fish same concept as the frogs it's a hollow body hooks that same this is those hooks are sticking out a little farther than I'd like but these are really good because you can mimic a dead fish on top of the water and these walk really dreamy they walk perfectly on top of the water and a lot of bass can't resist it. You can catch a lot of big ones on these. So anytime you see a lot of movement or any sort of action up on top of the water or you see schools of shad swimming around, there's going to be ones dying or injured and this is what this is going to mimic and the bass are just going to nail it. One other thing I'm going to go over with you guys is the retrieval of the frogs. The ones with the normal mouths right here you can use for either walking and I cut one shorter than the other. Or you can use for just like a twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause motion, just however you want to work it. And I use the legs the same length on those. And the other ones are the ones with the cupped mouths. And what those are going to do is when they're going through the water, they're going to sit like this on the water. And when you twitch it, it's going to bring it down. And the mouth is going to cup all that water and spit it out ahead. And it's going to make all like a bloop sound every time. And it'll... Sometimes it's just attracting them to see where the frog's at, and the other time it just makes them mad and they hit it out of pure anger. They're not even really hungry, but both have their time. These calm ones, it just depends on how aggressive they are. If it's calm and they're really chasing, you can throw these, but if it's wind that's kind of chopping up the water and you want to still throw a frog, these are real good to do that. And the last thing I'm going to go over with you guys is the rod reel line that I use. I have a loose speed spool, if I have enough room here, it's a loose speed spool and for the reel you're going to want a higher gear ratio, this one's 7.4 to 1 and the reason for the higher gear ratio is just so when you set the hook into them and the higher gear ratio is going to take in more line with each crank and if you set the hook into one and it's a bigger one you don't want to let them get down into the lily pads because those are really going to get the fish tangled up in there and a lot of times they'll get off if they get caught in there. So when you set that hook you want to be able to keep them on top of the water and almost ski them back to the boat and keep them as high as you can and not get them caught. And the rod I have, it's a 7.4 heavy, it's just a loose, what is it, speed stick, it's something I got off a tackle warehouse. But I like the 7.4 or maybe even a little longer because you want to use the heavy 7.4 because you want to be able to keep them, like I said, keep them high and keep them out of that grass to get them back into the boat and with the big ones it really helps. And also for the action, I like to keep it fast and the action is just the tip of the rod and I like the fast action because when you're using it to twitch the frog, when you're wanting to walk the frog, the fast action really helps with that. And the last thing is the line. I believe this is 50 pound braid 
Uh, any brand really works fine, but uh, I think this is Stren. Stren 50 pound, you can use anything. I'd stay with 40 or up because when they're getting tangled and it's ripping through grass and stuff, you're going to want it. And with the knot I tie with the frog is going to be a Palomar knot. I don't like doing just like the normal spin, put the line through knot because with the braid and when you're horsing on that and putting a lot of tension on it, the braid can slip and those normal spin knots will come out. So go ahead and I'm not going to show you guys, but you can look it up on YouTube. They make videos on how to tie Palomar knots. They're super easy, probably easier than the main what main way you guys know but with the palomar you can pull as tight as you want and it's not going to flip out because i've had that happen before where i've lost big ones on frogs where they pulled tight and it's been bass not northern biting it off but the bass have just pulled tight enough where the braid will slip and the knot will come out and away goes the fish and your frog it's a lose-lose situation there so that's going to do it for today's video guys thanks for watching and if you like this or want to see anything more like this just let me know please hit the like and subscribe button before you leave it'd be greatly appreciated and i'll see you on the next video